This video is about the installation of the Stuart Distinction D4000 water still. When you've unpacked the unit itself, what you need to check is that everything is actually in the box. First of all, you have got the, the stand, you have got a hose kit which consists of two tie wraps, spare connector, 8mm hose with two connectors and 1m of 16mm hose. You've then got the gasket kit which consists of the aluminium plate, the flange, the plastic insert, three screws, silicon o-ring and two straps. You've also got the boiler which comes complete with a stopcock and you've also got fitted actually in there you have got the boiler thermostat tube along with this the white screw cap and the seal. You've got a heater, you have got the condenser thermostat tube again with a seal and a white screw cap. You've got a condenser and you've got the reservoir water level sensor. Place your Distinction D4000 water still in the location where it's going to be operating and you've even got two uh, holes fitted in the actual stand. That's if you want to warm mount the unit itself. The first thing that you need to do is take off the end panel, which you see here. Now the end panel you take off by undoing the four screws. So, for this demonstration I've only put two screws in. When you take the panel off, you will see that it is captivated by an earth cable. Okay, take that off and put it to the side, like so. That will then give you access to the thermostats underneath. We're now going to connect our heater inside our boiler itself. We have the gasket kit and we take the, the flange and we put the three screws through the actual flange. We then place the flange onto the opening of the boiler. Notice how the flat of the flange is, is fitted underneath the boiler thermostat tube. We then have our plastic insert and we place our plastic insert over the opening of our boiler. Where the insert is open, put that to the top, squeeze it down and push the flange over the plastic insert. Then push the flange and the plastic insert, pull that towards the end of the actual boiler. So what we end up with is that. We then take our heater and onto our heater we will put our aluminium plate and our silicon o-ring. Take the aluminium plate and we have a groove which is on the inside there. The groove is actually facing the actual boiler. So the groove is fitted like so. We then take our aluminium seal and we put it onto our heater. Now we're going to put our aluminium, uh, our silicon seal 40 to 45 millimetres from the end. So the seal goes on and the gap is about 40 to 45 mil. We then take our heater and we place it inside a boiler, like so. And as you can see the two flats are at the top. We then line up the screw holes and we start to tighten the screws. So when this, the screws are done up you will have this sort of format here. Now. We are going to place our boiler onto our stand that way. So we need to make sure that our heater leads, when they come up, they fit exactly into our heater terminal block. If these are twisted the other way around, okay, and the cables need to be twisted, it will be extremely difficult to attach the 
heater cable into the terminal block. Therefore, you must make sure that brown is on the left, blue is on the right. Therefore, when you slide that heater in there, brown is on the left, blue is on the right. So when the heater's in, they fit exactly into the terminal block. If this is the opposite way around, simply slacken this off, turn your heater around until they are in the correct order. When your heater cables are aligned properly, we then tighten up the three screws. These must be tightened up evenly, like so. It is important that you do not over tighten these screws or you could crack the heater or the glass. To tighten the screws, you must ensure that the heater itself is perfectly horizontal. It is not touching the end of the boiler and it is not touching the bottom of the boiler. For this demonstration I haven't tightened these bolts up fully but as you can see when the bolts are tightened up fully it will pull the heater level. On our unit we have two thermostats. This one is the condenser thermostat and the one at the bottom there is the boiler thermostat. We need to unravel our boiler thermostat until we have approximately 250 millimeters from the end to there. So we need 250 millimeters that is straight. Okay, and this is so we can place this inside our boiler. We then take our two straps which come in our gasket kit. You can see we've got two metal straps with a spring on one end. What we do is we attach the spring to the back hook on the cradles. So we then take out our boiler thermostat tube. So the boiler thermostat tube comes with a seal and we place the seal on the end approximately 30 millimeters from the end of the tube. You can then place that into the boiler like so. The, the white screw cap place onto your boiler thermostat like so. We will then put the boiler, th boiler onto the cradle. Our boiler on, we will put our thermostat inside the thermostat tube we will then slide the boiler on until the pit, which is underneath, engages with the hole in the right hand side of the cradle. Obviously ensure the stop cuff is facing the front. We then slide it down until the thermostat is all the way into the thermostat tube. It's important to keep the 30mm gap between the end of the tube and the seal. When you are nearly there, keep on feeding the thermostat into the thermostat tube, like so. Okay. And then connect up the white screw cap. You can then move the boiler back carefully until the pit underneath engages in the cradle. Like when so. you've got your boiler in position, you can see the thermostat wire in the end, end compartment here. Make sure that the thermostat wire is not touching any of the chassis or the heater. When you've done that, you can see that our thermostat is actually all the way into the tube and the actual coil of the thermostat is equidistant across the vapour tube so it is all level. If your boiler is in place you can then take the free end of the straps fold them over 
and connect to the forward part of the cradle. That will hold your boiler in place. We then connect our heater up. We undo two screws on the heater block. We will then connect our two terminals inside and then tighten them up. When our boiler is in place, you can check the stabilising o-ring is secure in place and the sealing o-ring. Make sure they're in good, good condition and they're fitted correctly. The stabilising o-ring should be about 30-40mm above the boiler itself. We will then connect our condenser to our vapour tube. Before we connect our condenser, um, on the condenser outlet, which is facing the front as we connect it to the vapour tube. Now's the time to connect your distillate output uh, using 8 or 9 mil tubing and secure with a tie wrap on there. That is not included with the kit. Before we connect the condenser onto the vapour tube, we will connect to our condenser our thermostat condenser tube. Like so. If we loosen the white cap, inside is the seal, which is inside there. We're going to ensure that that seal fits around the vent on the distillate output. So we connect that onto there so that it's slightly loose. We will then connect that to our vent. Push it on, as you can see, like so. When you have that fitted, then just tighten up the white screw cap. We then connect our condenser to our vapour tube. From the top, ensuring the display output at the front. When it is on, you will feel a slight resistance. Press down slightly, just to create the seal at the top, until you've got about 5mm gap between the boiler and the condenser. We then connect our condenser thermostat into our condenser thermostat tube. Again, it's a case of straightening out the condenser thermostat, place it in the tube, like so, and we need to arrange the wiring, the condenser wire, so that it does not obstruct the two thermostat reset buttons. So you can arrange this anywhere you please, okay, so we are not restricting the reset button so we can get access to them and we can press the, the reset if needed. Short length of 8mm hosing from the um, hose kit with the two connectors on the end. We'll then connect this to the upper part of the condenser. This is the condenser outlet and we then connect it to the boiler constant level controller like so. Make sure that they are too. We will then connect our 16mm earth spigot and hose assembly to the drain of the constant control. First thing is to put it into some hot water. This will make the tubing supple. And we find about 20 to 30 seconds in there is enough. Take it out, then connect it onto our drain. Okay. For the purpose of this demonstration, I won't push it on fully, but when that is on fully, you can then use the tie wrap provided to tie wrap on there. We then take our 1 metre of 16mm hose from our hose kit, and the same thing, dip one end into the hot water, this will make it more supple for about 20 to 30 seconds, but we'll then connect it to the free end of the 16mm earth spigot. When that is placed on there, again that can be tie wrapped. The drain tube then falls away into a drain. You must ensure that there's no kinks 
and the actual tubing falls away straight into the drain. We then connect our cold water inlet tube. As you can see, this 8mm earth spigot is connected with the other earth spigot to an earth point. We then connect that to the bottom connector of the condenser. And that is where you will connect your cold water supply. It's important that you ensure that the stop cup on the front is fully closed, like so. And the final thing to do is to connect back up our end panel. It fits on like so. And the four screws are tightened up. So distinction is, is um, connected up. Ensure you've got good quality tubing and it's held together with hose clips for your cold water supply. Um, allow the water to feed through. Uh, ensure your stock cock is closed and check for any leaks. Then turn your water supply off. To get rid of the water that's in there, open your stock cock. The water will drain out via your drain the stock cock back up. When your unit is together don't forget just to remove any covers that are still on there, especially the, the red one of the funnel. When we've leak checked our unit we can then connect up our um, reservoir water level sensor. It consists of the black hose with the glass bell. That goes into your reservoir. The tubing connects to the pressure switch which is there and that fits on there. There's no need to tie that, that onto there. And that's finished. You can then connect your electrics. This should be done only by a qualified electrician. And this unit is what we call permanently connected um, unit. So it needs to be permanently connected to the mains, not via plug.